Hey guys, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be going over the Motley and Stripe jeans in corn snakes and how they work when you're breeding them together. Now, if you're not comfortable with punnet squares or if any of this kind of stuff looks like really confusing to you, you may want to go back and watch the first few videos in this playlist. I made them specifically in order so that you guys could get sort of a baseline of knowledge about all this stuff and then build on top of that from there instead of just like jumping in with both feet, something that looks really confusing. So I will link that in a card above so that you guys can go and watch this from the first video onward. I highly suggest you get a pen and paper and uh, definitely like kind of get a base knowledge before just jumping in with both feet. So I'm going to go ahead and start the Motley and Stripe uh, explanation with saying uh, the last video, if you remember, was about the incomplete dominant recessive allelic mutations. Now, recessive allelics, so recessive means it's recessive to the normal type, and that's, if you'll recall, one of the first videos that I did in this series. And then the um, Allelic means that they share a locus, a place on the DNA. So when they show up together, they uh, will actually like be a combined version of the two. So like, as I mentioned in the last video, like Annery and Diffuse, for example, since they are single recessive genes that don't have like a helper gene or another gene that they can show up with, um, they can only be all in line with another anery on the DNA or with nothing. So there's either going to be two anery or anery and nothing. And then in the last video, I went over ones like Amyl and Ultra that they share a locus. So they do line up together. And so they, when they show at the same time. So Molly and Stripe has a similar relationship to those allelic genes. Uh, they, Motley and Stripe is allelic with each other. However, Motley is dominant over Stripe, visually speaking. So essentially, Motley almost uses Stripe in order to show. Um, when Motley and Stripe show up together, they, uh, the Motley is the only one that will actually be displayed. And I'll kind of go over all of that as we go through. So I'm just going to start out with the first two like very basic pairings, which is similar to what we did in the recessive video, which is a homozygous motley to a normal. A homozygous motley to a normal gives you all normals that are het for motley. That's something simple that we did in the first episode. Uh, and it's the same with the second one. This is a homozygous stripe to something that is a normal and does not have any stripe. So you get normals that are het for stripe. That's pretty simple. Uh, I did want to mention those two to you guys because after we do all of this, I didn't want you guys to go back and wonder, well, after all of this weird stuff, how does it just react when it's by itself? So that's how that happens. Uh, number three is where it starts to get interesting. So when you breed a visual motley, that's homozygous motley, to a visual stripe, homozygous stripe, you get 100% motley stripes. Now a motley stripe, if you remember, as I mentioned, Motley kind of uses Stripe in order to show itself. So when Motley and Stripe show up together, all of these are 100% visual Motley's het for Stripe. So breeding a Motley to a Stripe is very similar to breeding a normal to a Stripe, where if you breed a normal to a Stripe, you get normal's het Stripe. When you breed a Motley to a Stripe, you get Motley's het Stripe. It's a very odd um, relationship that these genes have with each other, but you will, if you get a, um, if you get motleys out of a stripe, a visual stripe adult, all of those babies are going to be het stripe and uh, visually motley. There is no visual difference between a motley that's het for stripe and a motley that's not het for stripe. I know a lot of people have probably seen pinstripe motleys. Pinstripe motleys, uh, they look like they have kind of a long stripe down the back, but they're just genetically motley. There are some pinstripes that are genetically het stripe as well, but that is not an indicator of that, of that stripe het at all. I've had, actually most of the pinstripes that I've had ended up not being het stripe. So do not confuse a motley stripe for a pinstripe motley. They are different things. The next pair that I want to go over is a visual stripe to a normal het for motley. Now remember when you have a homozygous of anything, half of those, or all of those babies are going to have that gene on half of their DNA. They're all going to be het for that gene. So when you have a 
visual stripe, a homozygous stripe, all of the babies are at least going to be het stripe. And then since you have a, you know, het motley over here, half the babies are going to be het motley as well, and then half of them will not. So what you end up with is you get half, statistically, half normals that are het for stripe, and then half motleys that are het for stripe. Because remember, when motley and stripe show up together, they, they will be visually motley, and then they will just carry the stripe gene, essentially. Uh, so that's how you want to actually say that if you end up with uh, motleys out of a stripe pairing, is they are motleys het stripe. Over here I have a similar breeding with a homozygous motley to a normal het for stripe. And again, you're going to get half normals, but this time those normals are all het for motley since your adult that was a motley was um, homozygous motley. So all of the babies have motley on one side, and then down here they have nothing on the other side, which means it's just a normal het for motley. And then here they have stripe on the other side. And these then are all going to be visual mollies het for stripe. The pair number six here is where it starts to get kind of interesting with some weird percentages. So I have a normal het motley bred to a normal het stripe. And what you end up with is one quarter right here, visual motleys that are het for stripe. So you have motley on one side, stripe on the other side. That means it's a visual motley het for stripe. And here you have three different sets of normals. And if you'll recall from the last video, we often get these three different sets of normals that we have to figure out how to label. Uh, here, you know that two out of three, or at least het for something. So this is what we did when we were talking about AML and ULTRA in the last video, where we have two out of three are het for something. So all of your normals, this isn't going to be your, your motley stripe, all of your normals, two out of three of them are het for either motley or stripe. So when you breed a het motley to a het stripe, and you're going to get three different sets of normals, but you're not going to be able to know which ones are which based on just looking at them. You're not going to be able to know which ones got the motley gene or the stripe gene or, no, or neither of them because they're just going to look like normals. So you have to label all of the normals as two out of the three or 66% possibly het motley or stripe. That's how you label the normals in this clutch. The next pairing I have is actually a motley stripe to a normal. Uh, and this is another interesting one with some interesting percentages where you have half that are normals het for motley and half that are normals het for stripe. So the way that you want to do this is similar to what we did down here with the normals is all of the normals now, instead of just 66% of them, 100% of them are het for either motley or stripe. Uh, you don't necessarily want to label these as being 50% possibly het motley, 50% possibly het stripe, because uh, if you just label some babies as 50% possibly het stripe, and then you send them off, and they, those were the ones that ended up being het motley, then you, you've almost, um, not, it's, it's not that you haven't been honest, but I definitely want you guys to understand that you have to include both possibilities in when you say this, because you don't want the buyer to think that they're getting something that they're actually not getting or that you don't actually know that they're getting for sure. So you want to make sure that you label them with both possible labels in there. Number eight is a motley stripe to a normal het motley. And here's another one with some funky percentages. So you're going to get one quarter motleys that are not het for stripe, one quarter motleys that are het for stripe, one quarter normals that are het motley, and one quarter normals that are het for stripe. So what we do with the normals here is what we did with the normals for all of these. So since we know that 100% of the normals are het for either motley or stripe, all of the normals we will label like we labeled this, uh, het motley or stripe. 100% het motley or stripe. Now these here, these are both going to be visually motley and you're not going to be able to know which ones are het stripe and which ones aren't. So when you're labeling these motleys, you want to label the motleys as being 50% possibly het, possibly het stripe. Uh, so this is a very, very odd pairing. If you have a motley stripe bred to a normal het motley, all of the motleys that come out of that clutch have a 50% chance of being het stripe. 
and so do the normals, but the normals also have a 50% chance of being Hep Motley. Just remember, you don't want to label them as 50% possibly Hep Motley or 50% possibly Hep Stripe, because all of these normals are 100% Hep for either Motley or Stripe. And these normals, or these Motleys, I'm sorry, have a 50% chance of being Hep Stripe. That's probably going to be the sort of weirdest pairing that you can do as far as figuring out what percentages to label as what. We're going to move on to pair number nine, which is a motley stripe to a normal heifer stripe. And when you have this pairing, uh, it's a little bit more straightforward than the last pairing. It may not seem like it at first, but it is. So down here we have our normals, half being het for motley, half being het for stripe. So remember, these are 100% het for motley or stripe. All of these normals down here. And remember, if there's an X on one side, X in my book means there's, it's, a, it's just a placeholder for nothing being there. Uh, I know that I mentioned that in the last few videos. I didn't mention it at the very beginning of this one, but I figured if you guys had watched the previous videos, you would know that. But for those of you who don't remember or didn't know that, uh, everybody, um, if you go to like a biology class, they're going to use like a capital M and a small M and then a capital S and a small S for something like this. But I am using X in place of the small letter. So when they use like a capital P and a small P, the capital P means the gene is there and the small P means it's not. But in here, since we are writing this on a board, it's a little more difficult to tell the difference between a capital S and a small S and a capital M and a small M. So instead of using small letters, I place an X where there would be no gene on that side. So just remember, like, and these X's in between each of the pairings that you see, uh, I know that might seem a little bit confusing, but that just means a cross. You're crossing the two of them. So remember the X's in the middle just mean that you're crossing. That's a, a, a cross that you're making. And then the other X's that are actually in the uh, pairing itself means that there is no gene there. So just refreshing you guys on that. So down here, all of these, remember, are one, all of these motleys, or I'm sorry, all of the normals are 100% hat for motley or stripe. But up here, you're going to get one quarter visual stripes. And then you're going to get one quarter motleys hat for stripe. So this is going to be a lot more straightforward than this one because obviously you have your, your set of normals that are going to be 100% hat for either motley or stripe. But all the visuals that you get are going to be either motley, hat for stripe, or just stripe. Uh, when you have a stripe, uh, stripe is only visual when there is no motley present. So you don't have to worry about labeling these stripes as possibly het for motley or anything like that because stripe is only present when there is no motley. And it's similar to saying stripe is only present when there's no normal uh, or motley is only present when there's no normal, uh, like at least in this case up here. Um, so just sort of keep in mind that when stripe shows up and you have motley in the mix, when stripe shows up, you don't have to worry about that stripe being het for motley. That stripe is just a stripe. It's only the motleys that will sort of use stripe in order to show themselves. So uh, motley, you know, motley is kind of a jerk sometimes and it, it like will use stripe in order to show and doesn't let stripe show unless it's by itself. So that's kind of a way to remember it. Motley is kind of a jerk. Um, number 10, I have a motley stripe to a motley stripe. So if you have bred, say, a stripe to a motley and you held back these babies and you want to breed two of them together, you will get what's up here. So you get one quarter motleys that are uh, not het for stripe and you'll get one quarter stripes and then you'll get half motleys het for stripe. And remember up here we also have three different sets of motleys just like we had three different sets of normals down there. So the stripes of course are just going to be stripe because there's no motley involved in this. Now with these three sets of motleys, two out of the three of those sets are het stripe. So two, oops, if my marker would work, two out of three are het stripe, which is a 66% chance or 67%, whichever you prefer, possibly het stripe. So all of your motleys from this clutch are have a 66% chance of being het stripe, and that's how you want to label them as motleys, 66% possibly het for stripe. Number 11 here is somewhat similar. So you have motleys to a motley stripe, and uh, you are going to get 100% visual motleys. 
half of them being het stripe. So that's how you want to label them is all of the motleys from this clutch you label as being 50% possibly het stripe. When you breed a motley to a motley stripe. So let's say you decided to take a baby from this pairing and pair it back to the motley parent. That's how you're going to label all of the babies. You're going to label all of, the, all of the motley babies that come out of that and there should only be visual motleys. You're going to label them all as 50% possibly head straight. Now the very last one is similar to this and is we have a visual stripe to a motley stripe. And again, this one is going to be a little bit more straightforward, a little bit easier. So uh, all of the visual motleys that you get from this clutch are 100% head for stripe. And then you're also going to get stripes. So uh, remember, if you have a homozygous, I know I've said this a few times, but I'm saying it again, if you have a homozygous, all of those babies must be het for that gene. So you have homozygous stripe here to a het motley het stripe, which is like a motley that's het for stripe. Then you're going to get half stripes and half motley's het for stripe. So I hope that all of this sort of made sense to you guys. And like I said, if it didn't, definitely go back and watch some of the previous videos. Motley and Stripe is the most complicated one that we will do. Motley and Stripe is the only gene pairing that has this relationship that's um, recessive and allelic, recessive to the normal type, allelic to each other, but not in complete dominant. It's the only one where one gene is visually dominant over the other one. Now, a few people have mentioned that it's possible that Ultra is actually visually dominant over AML, but through my own personal breedings, I have not found that to be true. So that's why I left the AML and Ultra in that the last section and put the Amotley and Stripe in this section all by itself because it is definitely the weirdest gene combination that you're going to find. And remember, this is the only gene combination that has this. And I listed the other gene combinations in the last video that would apply to the uh, incomplete dominant recessive allelic ones. Uh, and that's going to be your AML Ultra, like I mentioned, Castagna and Sunrise, and then Hypo Strawberry and Christmas. Those are all uh, in that last video. And then uh, I also listed, I believe, the majority of the recessive genes for you guys. The recessive genes, there's more recessive genes than there are anything else, so that's going to be the most important thing to remember. Uh, and I also did the dominant gene one already and listed those for you. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be doing the incomplete dominant genes that are that have that relationship to the normal type. So here we talked about, or the last video, we talked about incomplete dominance with recessive genes, where... They were recessive to normal. Normal would show over them if they were on one allele, but when they showed up together, they would blend uh, like two different colors of water. They would blend together. Uh, and that's something that also happens when you have one gene with nothing on the other side. And that's what we'll go over in the next video. Uh, if anything was vague or you guys didn't understand anything, let me know in the comments and I'll try to clear it up in a future video. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.